Hi, I'm Infernum, and this is my recap for the anime, I Will Parry All the World's Strongest Man Wanna Be an Adventurer. If you like my recaps, please subscribe. This is a story about a commoner who became an orphan in childhood and lacked any special skills like a hero. All he had was his mother's will before she passed away, asking him to become the strongest adventurer. Noor's only skill is parrying, but after 10 years of daily training, he has reached the point where he can parry a thousand attacks at once. But is it enough? Early one morning, Noor breaks through a hole in the sewer to allow water to flow properly. A grandmother thanked Noor for his help, and he moved on. In another place, he assists workers, ensuring they finish their tasks on time thanks to Noor's help. Suddenly, he hears a voice coming from a cave, pleading for help. Noor rushes there and encounters a huge minotaur. Fifteen years ago, Noor helped with household chores while his mother was ill. Noor promised to take the goats to the mountains, reassuring his worried mother. As she coughed again, Noor offered to fetch water for her, but she stopped him, wiping his face and telling him to live as he wishes. In the evening, Noor prepared soup for his mother, but he noticed she no longer woke up. The next morning, he made a grave for her and, gathering his strength, began to take care of the household chores. Every day, he lived as his mother wished. One evening, he unexpectedly found a strange book and read a tale about an adventurer, a hero who, with friends, defeated a dragon and, despite the odds, would raise his sword and conquer all. Noor wanted to become an adventurer. Every day, he visited the graves of his father and mother, telling them that he was leaving home for the first time because he wanted to become an adventurer. He walked into the forest, crossing the barrier that had closed their home. That night, he was scared because he was still just a child. The next morning, he stumbled upon a huge city and immediately entered it. He passed through a checkpoint and found himself in a bustling city where people were buying and selling. He also saw adventurers and admired them. He found the adventurers' guild and met with the leader, but the leader told him that it wasn't a place for children. He should leave because his parents would worry about him. Nor said he had no parents. The guild leader turned away, saying there was nothing to be done. Before accepting Noor into the guild, he would have to undergo special training. Noor went there and trained hard every day. Everyone with talent showed it immediately, but after two months, Noor still couldn't demonstrate his talent with the sword. The trainer expelled him, saying he had no chance. Noor decided to focus on training his physical strength. After another two months, he was dismissed by another trainer who said he had only trained physical strength. He tried with a hunter, but couldn't prove himself there either, nor in magic or healing. Noor became upset and left. When he returned to the Adventurer's Guild, the leader said he couldn't accept him because he hadn't developed any skills. Noor went back home and promised his father and mother's graves that he wouldn't give up and would train hard to become an adventurer. He began honing his parrying skills, which he had learned during training. A year later, he could evade 10 attacks simultaneously. Three years later, this number grew to 100 swords at once, but it still wasn't enough. At this rate, he wouldn't become an adventurer. 10 years later, with a single swing of his sword, he could parry the strikes of a thousand swords, but he hadn't acquired any new skills. In a final attempt, he returned to the adventurer's guild. Once again, his skills were deemed insufficient. Then suddenly, the guild leader appeared, not recognizing him at first. Nor immediately recognized him and told him that he had trained for 10 years and could only parry attacks. The guild leader explained that the guild had ranks from E to S, but even for the lowest rank, E, one needed at least two skills. Nor was disheartened, but the leader mentioned there was a rank below E where he could perform city tasks instead of guild missions. Nor immediately agreed and received an F rank certification. He began helping everyone in the city using his honed physical strength and basic skills like nimble movement or minor healing. Every day, he assisted people in the city and trained with his sword in the evenings. Finally, his dream of becoming an adventurer and helping people came true. Returning to the moment when Nor encountered the huge Minotaur and people trying to protect the princess, the Minotaur effortlessly struck down a man. Nor realized the Minotaur was extremely powerful and attacking head-on would be futile. The Minotaur defeated all the knights and Nor decided to intervene. Picking up a sword from the ground, he resolved to face the Minotaur. Nor parried the Minotaur's strike and pushed it back, but parrying alone wasn't enough since Nor lacked offensive skills. The Minotaur noticed a ring on the girl's hand and decided to attack her. Nor managed to parry the Minotaur's strike in time, but his sword broke. Despite this setback, he remembered his father's words and parried the Minotaur's strike once more, ultimately decapitating it. The Minotaur fell, and the girl stood up, thanking Nor for saving her. She wanted to know Nor's name, but he left, saying he wasn't that important. Suddenly, knights arrived, relieved to see the girl unharmed. Her name was Linenberg, 
and the knights were glad to see her safe. She tried to stop Noor, but the knights intervened. Later, Noor felt distraught in the city. The Minotaur, even though not a demon, nearly killed him, realizing he needed to train even harder to defeat demons in the future. After Noor defeated the Minotaur, specialists from the kingdom gathered at the scene and began cleaning up. Lin approached the corpses of her warriors and knelt to honor those who had fallen in battle. However, her knight, Inos, ran up to her and expressed regret for not being by her side at that time. One of the knights said that the Lord wanted to speak with her and that they needed to return to the castle immediately. Lin agreed. The Lord spoke with Lin and did not believe that the Minotaur had actually risen to the surface as it was a dungeon monster. The knight affirmed it was true. The Lord speculated that someone had deliberately lured the Minotaur to the surface. The knight produced a ring and said that a human was indeed responsible, showing him the ring. Research indicated that the ring was made in the Deerit Empire. The Lord realized that the Empire was trying to kill the princess and seize what rightfully belonged to them, the kingdom's main resource, a legendary relic. The Lord also remembered Nor, who had managed to defeat the Minotaur with a single sword and mentioned that a group of warriors had failed to keep up with him and lost him. The Lord wondered who he was. Noor returned to the guild, and the guild master met him with surprise, asking if he had survived. Noor replied that he didn't understand what he meant, and the guild master explained that a powerful monster had emerged from the dungeon and no one had seen Noor, leading him to believe that Noor had perished. But Noor said that he had been pursued by some people and was hiding from them. The guild master remarked that even at his peak strength, he wouldn't have been able to handle such a monster. Noor replied that he didn't think the Minotaur was that strong. To him, it seemed like an ordinary cow. The guild master decided to ask if Noor wanted to find a better job. Noor said that he was already working in the guild. Suddenly, a stranger appeared. It was Princess Lin, who had managed to find Noor. She had used the magic she had been learning all her life to locate him. Noor was surprised by her magic and praised her. Everyone in the guild immediately realized that Lin was a princess, while Noor was speaking to her informally. Lin suggested that they talk somewhere quiet. However, the guild master grabbed Noor and asked what he had done, then let him go. Noor and Lin went to a quiet place to talk, using stealth magic to hide themselves. Once they reached the spot, Lin knelt down and thanked him again for his help. Noor said that with such magic, Lin could have handled it herself, but Lin insisted that Noor was very strong and that she was grateful to him. Lin began to talk about wanting to reward him and mentioned that her father wanted to meet him and might even offer him land. But Noor refused all the offers, and Lin said she wouldn't move anywhere until Noor accepted the reward. Looking at Lin, Noor suddenly remembered his past, when he too would refuse to leave until he had learned something. He decided to agree to Lin's request and said he was ready to meet her father. Lin was delighted and decided to meet her father, saying that he would use magic and they would go together. They reached a huge castle, and Noor was amazed at the sheer size of the building. They passed through the guards unnoticed, and Noor asked Lin for her name. Lin blushed, realizing she hadn't introduced herself properly, and introduced herself. They continued on and met one of Lin's warriors, Enas. Lin asked her to take her to her father because she had brought the man who saved her. On the way to her father, they encountered another warrior named Gin, who immediately attacked Noor. Noor didn't even react, and the warrior stopped his spear just in front of Noor. Inez ordered Gin not to do anything because Noor was Lin's guest, and Inez walked ahead, not trusting Noor, and told Gin to come along with them. Lin's father, along with his son, was discussing negotiations about the legendary relic and how the Dayarit Empire demanded that they surrender the relic or face war. However, the king and his son decided not to give up the relic, even if it meant going to war. Suddenly, the doors opened and Lin, Noor, and the other warriors entered the throne room. Lin's brother began to scold her because he saw her wearing the hermit's cloak, which hides the wearer. Lin explained that she wore it because she wanted to find her savior. She introduced Noor as the one who saved her from death. Her father rose from his throne and walked towards Noor. Noor introduced himself and apologized for not being properly dressed or prepared, as Lin was in a hurry. Lin's father said it didn't matter. The most important thing was that Noor saved his daughter. If he hadn't, the king would never have seen his daughter again. Her father decided to offer Noor a reward, as a token of gratitude was essential. But Noor, as before, began to refuse, saying he needed nothing. The king insisted, offering even the entire treasury of treasures, but Noor declined again. The king then went to his throne and took a huge dark sword from behind it. 
he decided to gift it to Noor, saying that such a warrior would find it more useful than letting it gather dust in the throne room. Noor decided to accept the sword. All the warriors were astonished that the king himself was giving such a legendary weapon to a stranger. Noor took it and suddenly felt the sword's power. Lin's father told him he should try out the sword. Noor activated his power and swung the sword with one hand, causing the entire throne room to nearly lift off from the force of the swing. Everyone was surprised and a bit shocked by the display. Noor commented that the sword was heavy, but that he could handle it. Lin's father was astonished that Noor could hold it with one hand and asked him to help train his daughter, as it was a dangerous time. Noor said he couldn't teach Lin anything, which made Lin pout a bit. Her father agreed with Noor and laughed. Noor said he would be leaving, and Lin's father thanked him once more for saving his daughter. As Noor left, he looked at the sword and remembered that its width was the same as the width of a drain pipe, thinking it would easily clear out any grime. Suddenly, one of Lin's knights, Enos, approached Noor and asked to speak with him. She knelt and apologized for her behavior towards him, explaining that she was the protector of the family and treated all strangers with suspicion. Enos introduced herself and said that she was Lin's shield, dedicated to protecting her, but she had failed in this duty and was very grateful to Noor for saving Lin. She vowed to help Noor for the rest of her life. Noor said he didn't need anything special, but Inas insisted that if he ever needed anything, he should let her know. She also warned Noor not to speak to the king so informally as he had earlier. Noor thanked her for the warning, and Inus asked him to introduce himself. When Noor gave his name, Inus's expression changed slightly, but Noor didn't understand why. Inus then left. Just as Noor was about to head home, he was met by Gil, who asked to see what Noor was truly capable of, but Noor just wanted to go home. Noor and Gil are heading to the training arena. Noor is unhappy that Gil is taking him somewhere, as he is tired and wants to go home. Noor asked where Gil was taking him, but Gil said it was for a training match. Noor mentioned that he hadn't trained with anyone for a long time. Gil picked up his spear and said he would show Noor what he was capable of. Noor picked up a sword, thinking that this was the perfect place for a novice adventurer, and told Gil he was ready to fight. They positioned themselves in the center. Noor knew he was no match for Gil, and Gil said they would start and began attacking Noor. However, Noor easily dodged every strike from Gil, realizing that Gil had trained a lot since every movement was precise. But Noor didn't understand one thing. Why was Gil so slow? Noor realized that Gil was not fighting with full strength and called for a pause in the fight. Noor asked Gil not to hold back. Gil apologized, and Noor noticed that Gil had become much faster. However, he frequently exposed himself after each strike. Noor thought it was definitely a trap, but Gil couldn't understand why he couldn't hit Noor. Gil decided to execute a series of secret strikes, luring Noor into a trap and catching him off guard, but Noor managed to dodge and said he was fine and ready to continue. Gil became a bit angry and used his dragon explosion magic, then immediately launched a thrust, thinking he had hit Noor. However, Noor dodged and said he was surrendering. Noor mentioned that it had gone too far, but in the training hall, everyone began discussing the fight and how Noor managed to evade the dragon explosion. And everyone thought that Noor was lucky and that Gil's commanding talent was unbeatable. Gil recalled his past, remembering that from a young age, he had been very strong, believing he had a talent for the spear. Gil stood at the foot of a mountain when the village chief came to him and asked if he was satisfied with his fight that day. Gil responded that it was boring and that he couldn't find warriors stronger than himself. The chief advised him to return to the capital, where there were strong warriors. Gil returned to the capital and defeated every new warrior who appeared there, but none were a challenge. Gil became so tired of being strong that life started to bore him. One day, while lying on the grass, his mentor came to him and asked what he was doing idly. Gil replied that he was tired of fighting weak opponents. The mentor asked about Inas, to which Gil said she was strong, but he could defeat her in a training match. He expressed a desire for warriors like his mentor. The mentor responded that he didn't have time for that because of the ongoing conflict in the kingdom and wished his student patience, as someone stronger than his mentor would eventually appear. Gil thought about Noor, an ordinary person who had defeated a minotaur and even refused the king's reward despite having no special abilities. Gil wondered how Noor managed to defeat the minotaur. Reflecting on their fight, Gil could not hit Noor and even Noor had managed to dodge Gil's secret techniques. What infuriated Gil the most was that Noor had said at the end that he would look forward to fighting him again. Gil thought that Noor was not trying to embarrass him in front of others. However, Noor was simply scared and did not want to continue the fight. 
He was heading home, thinking that Gil was incredibly strong. All this time, Noor had been trying to convey to him that pride could be harmful. Noor thought he was weak and needed to train even more. The next day, with the help of his sword, he finally managed to clean even the spots he couldn't handle before. Looking at his sword, he recalled how the king had said that the sword would remain without a scratch, so Noor could do whatever he wanted with it. Noor was asked for more help and found himself in a forest. He began to think about how he needed to find something to do quickly, especially now that he had such a sword. He began to consider using his sword as a grill or as an oar for a boat. But Noor remembered that he struggled with magic and could only use it at a basic level. Suddenly, Lin appeared and greeted Noor. He asked her why she had come to him, and Lin asked if she could become his assistant. Noor didn't understand what she meant, and Lin explained that she wanted to be by his side and learn something from him, and she would try not to be a burden. Noor refused, but Lin persisted in denying his refusal, saying she would be more useful to him. Noor said that he had nothing to teach Lin, as he wasn't engaged in anything special. He insisted that he didn't need her help. However, Lin was determined to prove her usefulness. She decided to use her magic, ice dance, and directed it towards herself. Noor was worried for her, and suddenly Lin used Hellflare and reflected her own attack. She also had a Mist Blade, which allowed her to instantly cut down a tree behind her. Additionally, she possessed Divine Strike, which she used to strike towards Noor and cut through another tree. Noor said he understood, and that it was enough. Lin then asked if she could be his assistant. Noor replied that he had nothing to teach her, as he considered himself weak. Lin began to shout and insist that she was much weaker than Noor. Noor decided to explain things properly and showed her his magic. Lin saw it and was amazed. On her way home, she remembered how, back at the academy, they talked about a boy who never gave up. Even though he never passed any exams, he kept trying to become stronger. Lin had been impressed by such a person, especially since he was still a child, and she had always wanted to meet him. When she first met him and he saved her from the Minotaur, she realized how incredible he was, even though he didn't understand it himself. One day, her magic mentor showed her a tiny flame, explaining that even a tiny flame could grow depending on one's training. Lin activated her tiny flame, but realized that even her flame could not grow, despite all her hard work over the years. It is not something that can be learned in a single day. Lin remembered Noor's tiny flame, noting that his flame was even larger than that of the legendary mage of their capital. All the skills Noor had demonstrated were extraordinary. Lin finally realized that no matter how hard she tried to impress him, Noor possessed such power. She recalled how he fought the Minotaur, deflecting all its blows with a broken sword. Noor was not only physically strong, but also strong in spirit. All Lin wanted was to become as strong as Noor. She knew that soon she would need to rule the state like her father, and she needed to become much stronger to achieve that. She resolved to follow Noor until he taught her how to become much stronger. By evening, she met Noor, who had finished his work. She told him that she understood everything and admitted that her pride and immaturity were the issues. She decided to follow him until the day Noor acknowledged her, believing that the highest power undoubtedly lay in Noor's strength. From that day on, Lin would call him her mentor. Noor was confused about how things had come to this point. Brother Lin sits, pondering why his father gave away his legendary black sword to a stranger. He reminisces about how his father acquired the sword through arduous trials that nearly cost them their lives. When they finally saw the sword, they were amazed, as no one knew what it was forged from, yet it was stronger than any metal. No matter what they tried, no one could even scratch it. Brother Lin still doesn't understand why his father so easily gave away such a sword. Then he thought his father might have done the right thing, giving the sword not to a stranger, but to someone who could defeat a minotaur. Perhaps his father was looking ahead, giving him such a sword so that Noor couldn't shirk his responsibilities in the future. Noor and Lin were buying food on the street when Noor asked if it was okay that he noticed her and invited her along. Lin said it was fine. Noor said that after they ate, they would go to the guild and Lin addressed Noor as her mentor. All this time, Noor was thinking about how to prove to Lin that he was just an ordinary person, not the superhero she saw him as. Noor and Lin returned to the guild, where the guild master asked Noor why he had brought Lady Lin with him. Lin told him not to call her that anymore, as she was now Noor's apprentice. The master asked Noor why he came today, and Noor said he needed a quest for two people. The master suggested that if they teamed up, they could hunt goblins. Noor was surprised, as he had never fought goblins before, and this would be his first time. Noor realized that only thanks to Lin's high rank could he go goblin hunting outside the castle. 
Noor thought that Lin had managed to convince him, and he asked Lin if she was okay with everything since he could only take on such a task because of her. Lin said it was fine, and Noor left, saying that his dream would finally come true. The guildmaster gave them the quest and advised them to be careful, as even the smallest threats required vigilance. He pointed out the beast forest and instructed them to head there, mentioning that to complete the quest, they needed to bring back a goblin's right ear. Noor understood and set off on the quest with Lin. They checked in and were allowed past the castle gates, heading towards the beast forest. Noor was amazed by the forest, noting its entirely different ecosystem and the unique appearance of the trees. He asked Lin to tell him about goblins. Lin explained that goblins reproduce quickly and frequently find villages to attack, which is why adventurers hunt them. Nor grasped the information about goblins and realized that Lin was not only strong in magic, but also very knowledgeable and intelligent. They entered the dense forest, and Lin used detection magic, stating that there were no goblins around. Suddenly, Lin sensed a creature in the distance and told Nor to go there. They headed to the spot, and Lin said that the monster had vanished, even though she was sure she had detected it there. They moved further, but still couldn't find the monster. Nor listened carefully and noticed an unusual creature. Lin immediately attacked it, revealing a huge goblin. Nor was astonished, as goblins were supposed to be the weakest monsters. The goblin became enraged and used a tree trunk as a weapon. Nor noticed that Lin was scared and told her not to be afraid, as it was just a goblin. Lin regained her composure and realized that this was not an ordinary goblin, but a goblin king, which posed a significant threat. The goblin king, standing before them, consumed its own kind to become stronger. The goblin attacked, and Nor used parrying to deflect its blows. The goblin tried to pin Nor down, but Nor parried again and pushed the goblin back. Lin intervened, using her magic, but she couldn't hit the goblin as it quickly dodged her attacks. The goblin then aimed to throw the tree trunk at her, but Nor parried just in time to save her. Lin noticed that the goblin had no injuries and said it had a strange stone that needed to be destroyed for them to win. The goblin tried to catch Nor off guard, but Lin used her magic in time to attack it. The goblin immediately recovered from Lin's attack, leading her to believe that they would waste their strength until they removed the stone from its forehead. Nor asked Lin to hit him with the same spell she used on the goblin. Lin was worried, saying she might tear him apart, but Nor reassured her, explaining that he planned to use his sword to quickly approach the goblin and destroy the crystal. Without such speed, it wouldn't work. Lin used her magic and Nor shot forward at the speed of light, reaching the goblin. The goblin couldn't react in time and Nor struck the stone, dislodging it from the goblin. Nor asked Lin to handle the goblin herself and to make its death as painless as possible. Lin used Hellfire Flash and destroyed the goblin. Nor approached and realized he needed to train even harder and become stronger because goblins were no joke. Later, Brother Lin was informed that there had been a goblin king in the forest, and it was several times stronger than regular goblin kings. The informants speculated that the goblin king had been artificially created in another kingdom. Brother Lin began to worry about Lin, wondering if she was okay. The informants reassured him that Lin was fine and that the goblin had been hiding in the forest for about a week, even evading the kingdom's warriors. Nor and Lin returned to the guild, and Nor explained that Lin had saved him, and later they dealt with the goblin together. Lin tried to say that it wasn't like that, but the master commented that Nor always stood aside while Lin handled things on her own. Nor admitted he hadn't imagined goblins could be so strong, and mentioned he didn't know goblins had stones in their foreheads. The master was surprised and asked Noor if he was sure it was a goblin, then requested proof in the form of the right ear. Noor and Lin remembered that they had burned the goblin, leaving nothing behind. Brother Lin stands and watches the report of people from the city who are troubled by something, and it all happens in one place. Brother Lin understood what this was about. He recalled the incident in the beast forest and realized the enemy had come so close to them, he ordered everyone who could use the skills of search and detection to go there and summon the six lords. He said there was no time and they needed to go there quickly. Brother Lin got angry because he realized that scoundrels from another kingdom were willing to sacrifice people to capture their resources. In the city, Lin and Nor are eating again and are happy that they got paid for the goblin, even though they didn't bring any proof. Nor looked at Lin and wondered why she wasn't going home since her parents would be worried. 
Suddenly, Lin finished eating and said that now she definitely needed to return home and asked if Noor minded, to which Noor replied that it was fine. Suddenly, Brother Lin appeared and asked Noor to go to another city the next morning and they would pay Noor well. Brother Lin said he could only rely on Noor. The next morning, Noor set off on the journey. The master said it was a profitable offer, but Noor agreed because he had never traveled and saw it as a good opportunity to see other countries. Noor noticed that Lin was sad and told her to admire the fields. Noor said that someday he would become an adventurer and be able to travel as much as he wanted. Lin apologized for her brother forcing Noor to do this, but Noor said it was fine because he would even get paid for it, and besides, it was just a journey. Recalling the previous day when brother Lin told them where they were going and why, Lin began to worry if ever everything was all right, as she suspected some trickery since they were simply sent on a trip to relax. Inez told her not to worry because she was with Lin and could always protect her. Recalling the past, when Brother Lin summoned her and said that soon their city would be uneasy as the enemy had already come very close and wanted to attack the city, Inez asked if Lin knew about this. Brother Lin replied that she knew nothing and shouldn't know, and he asked Inez to take Lin far away on a journey so that Lin wouldn't be harmed and not to tell her her anything about it. Enos apologized to Noor for dragging him into this. Noor said, it sounded like there was a catch to this trip. Enos said there was nothing to worry about. Noor said he wasn't worried because he could protect himself, and if not, he would just run away. Enos said it was fine because she had a shield with her. Noor didn't understand what shield Enos was talking about, and Enos showed her divine shield, which could protect against anything in the world. Noor looked at Enos and remembered Gil, who was incredibly strong, having once defeated a dragon alone. Enos was as strong as Gil, and then Noor thought he had nothing to worry about with such a strong woman beside him. Recalling the past, when Inus used magic as a child and harmed her friend, but later a healer and a mage came, healed her friend, and asked to see her magic. And after she used her magic, the great mage said she had a divine gift. Suddenly, a knight appeared and said he would teach her how to use her magic. This was Dendalg, who taught her to use her power. But even so, Inus couldn't shake off the fear that she might hurt someone again. She withdrew from everyone, but that's what she thought all this time. Recalling the past, when Nor told her his name, and remembering the moment when she fought against a monster and nearly died, Dandog saved her just in time. To Enos, he was both a father and a mentor. Suddenly, a knight approached and said that monsters were attacking from all sides and they could do nothing. Dandog thought aloud, saying that at such a moment he wished Noor were here and admitted it came out naturally. Enos recalled that Noor was a person worthy of Dandog's recognition and she envied him greatly. Since Noor appeared before her, she felt even worse because of her strong envy towards him. Inez pulled herself together and said she would definitely protect Lin. Nor noticed a path in the field as if someone had crawled through it, and suddenly Lin noticed something and asked to leave the carriage. She used detection, and they all saw a giant toad with a boy. In the city, monsters appeared everywhere, and the war in the capital had already begun. Their battle against the monsters started, with the six lords having arrived in the capital, including Dandog. They all began to destroy the monsters throughout the capital. The boy with the toad was heading to the city to kill someone. Suddenly, their barrier was lifted, and the toad accidentally hit the boy with its tail. Inez noticed that it was a death dragon, and Nor immediately grabbed his sword and went to help the boy. He parried the toad's blow that was about to harm the boy, and Nor began to fight. Meanwhile, Inas explained that the boy wasn't there by chance. He appeared with the death dragon. Lin thought that this child might be a half-blood, people who create a mental connection with monsters, controlling powerful beasts that used to destroy entire capitals. Lin understood everything the boy was controlling the dragon to destroy the royal capital. Enos explained that when Lin revealed his barrier with her skill, the boy got scared and lost control of the monster. Nor was fighting the death dragon, and Lin wanted to help him, but Enos told her to wait. Nor thought the toad was much weaker than the goblin they fought before, but suddenly the toad decided to use its breath. Nor thought he could deflect the attack, and he did, but it was poison, deadly to humans. Nor fell to his knees. Lin wanted to help him, but Anas stopped her with her divine shield, saying she couldn't let Lin go there because she would now have to defend herself from the toad. Enos explained that one breath of this dragon was lethal. Lin tried to use purification, but nothing helped. As they defended themselves from the dragon's poison, suddenly a tooth from the dragon flew towards them. Enos realized that Nor had stood up and was fighting the death dragon. Seeing this, she remembered what Dandog had meant in the past, 
and Inas understood that Noor was the person she always wanted to become a true shield for the people. Noor managed to parry a few more blows, but collapsed again, realizing that he couldn't fight the toad now. But Noor knew he could handle everything because he had parried the toad. In a city where half demons are kept, they are all cursed children because from birth, they can control magical beasts. They are fed in terrible conditions, treated like livestock. A boy once told the story of how, during a war, a half-demon controlled a beast and destroyed a state, leading to worldwide hatred towards half-demons. Every day, a guard would vent his anger on the half-demons, beating them daily. The boy asked why they were treated this way, and as a result, he was beaten beyond recognition. They were then paraded in front of people to be humiliated. When it was discovered that the half-demon could also read their minds, the hatred only grew stronger. The boy never thought of harming anyone in return. Even when he was hurt, he never wanted to cause harm to anyone else. One day, the guard told the boy that he needed to be useful. He was instructed to control a monster and go to a certain city. The guard promised that if the boy succeeded, the beatings would stop not just for him, but for everyone in the prison, and they would be treated well. But if he failed, things would get much worse. The boy believed the guard and took the magical monster with him. However, unexpectedly, the seal broke, and the boy realized he could no longer control the monster. He began apologizing to everyone in the prison, knowing he had failed the task, and that the magical monster would now kill him. As death loomed, the boy started recalling his past and dreamed of being born in another world where he could be of use. But just before his death, Noor suddenly appeared. Noor began fighting the toad, parrying all its attacks, while the boy couldn't understand why Noor was protecting him. When the toad released its poison, Noor transferred his resistance to the poison to the boy, ensuring that he wouldn't be harmed. Noor continued to battle the toad, attempting to parry its attacks. After some time, Noor collapsed, recalling his past when he was left completely alone, scavenging for food in the mountains every day. Once, after gathering a lot of ingredients, he decided to make soup from the leftover herbs. He cooked the soup and began to eat it, thinking that even if something in it was inedible, the worst that could happen was a stomach ache. However, Noor collapsed after consuming it because he had ingested a real poison and blood began to seep from him. He struggled with the poison all night, and by morning, he had learned about the herb he should never have touched or eaten. Yet Noor didn't give up. He even tried to train in that state, but it was futile. He simply collapsed. Later, he woke up in bed, realizing he felt better, but he was extremely hungry. He headed back to the mountains to gather supplies for dinner. While collecting herbs, he was suddenly bitten by a poisonous snake in a sensitive spot. Realizing it was venomous, Noor collapsed again from the poison, but regained consciousness after a few minutes, noticing he felt better. He decided to fry the snake for dinner, figuring that the poison no longer affected him. After taking a bite, he discovered that the snake was quite tasty. The next day, he caught another snake and began experimenting, eventually realizing he had developed immunity to poison. Since then, Noor often ate venomous creatures, and all that happened to him was a little bit of blood. Noor came to his senses and explained that he had been coughing up blood because he couldn't control this new type of poison. Now, Noor could single-handedly fight against such a terrifying monster. He effortlessly parried all the toad's attacks. The toad decided to use its ultimate attack, filling its entire mouth with poison and preparing to release it. But Noor blocked the toad's mouth, causing it to explode from within. Noor defeated the toad and thought to himself that if it was so poisonous, it must be incredibly tasty. He remembered the boy and approached him, asking if he was all right. The boy replied that he was, and Noor asked why he had come here alone. The boy admitted that he had brought the monster here. Noor, being from a village and not having much experience with social interactions, thought the boy was trying to bring his goods to the city to sell them, or maybe he wanted to sell the toad to make delicious food. Noor didn't realize that the boy had intended to do harm. Noor apologized to the boy for chopping the toad into pieces, then asked how he managed to bring the toad here. The boy explained that he could control monsters. Noor was surprised by the boy's power, amazed that someone so young could control monsters. Noor lowered his sword and said the boy had an impressive skill. The boy admitted that this ability had been with him since birth, and Noor congratulated him on his skill. The boy then revealed that he was a half-demon and explained that all demons have this ability. Noor understood and shared that when he was a child, he had often wished for such a power, as it would have been helpful to have animals assist him with household chores. The boy asked Noor if he was afraid of him, considering that demons are frightening creatures. Noor replied that he wasn't afraid, 
as he never even imagined that beings like the boy existed, nor told the boy that he had an incredible talent, one that was actually useful. Unable to hold back his emotions, the boy started crying, as this very talent had been the source of ridicule and torment throughout his life. Nor didn't fully understand, but he gently patted the boy's head and reassured him that he was valuable, perhaps even more so than Nor himself. Just then, Lin and Inos returned, with Lin immediately asking if everything was alright. Nor responded that he was fine since poisons didn't affect him. Lin corrected him, explaining that it wasn't just poison, but powerful miasma, something that couldn't be easily defended against. She then remembered her mentor, a legendary saint who could heal everything around him with a single touch. Nor suddenly introduced the boy and asked Lin to heal him. Lin hesitated, pointing out that he was a half-demon, and she knew that half-demons were dangerous creatures that should be eliminated immediately. But Nor, unaware of this, insisted that he wanted to take the boy with them. Nor also mentioned that the boy had tried to drag the frog into the city, which angered Lin and Inez. Nor then asked the boy who had ordered him to do this, but the boy claimed that he didn't know. Inas noticed the boy's expression and realized that he had been enslaved his entire life and was being used for war. She asked where he could go, but the boy replied that he had nowhere to go since, on his way there, he had traveled half the distance blindfolded and didn't know where anything was. Lin reflected on her own incompetence, realizing that she had judged the demon based on his appearance without considering that he might be a kind-hearted slave. She asked Enos to take the boy with them, nor then asked the boy his name, and he replied that it was Rola. Nor complimented him, saying it was a great name. Inez warned that the city they were heading to was off-limits to demons, as it was a holy city. Suddenly, an unknown man appeared, intent on killing the boy. A man said that Rola had messed up the delivery he was supposed to bring to the city. Nor apologized to the man, admitting that he was the one who had ruined it. The man didn't understand why Nor was apologizing, as all he cared about was taking Rola, who was worth a lot. Suddenly, the man appeared behind Rola, but Noor quickly reacted and parried his attack. The man couldn't comprehend how Noor had done that and added that he wanted to take Rola and sell his body. Noor didn't understand what the man was talking about, yet he easily parried every one of the man's strikes. The man was puzzled as to why Noor was so strong and able to counter every blow. He decided to get serious in the fight, but even then, Noor managed to parry his strike although it sent him flying a considerable distance. Nor noted that the man's small daggers were quite sturdy, but one of the daggers broke. The man drew another and began relentlessly attacking Nor, still confused as to how Nor could keep up with his attacks. Lin realized that she couldn't even follow their fight and couldn't understand what they were doing. Enos said that this strange man was the undead adventurer Zabu, a former S-rank adventurer. Enos recalled the past when she found documents on an unsolved case and brought it to her group. They said that the undead Zabu had already disappeared, and no one should fight against him because he was so strong that even the mentors didn't want to send people to battle him. The mage then shared more about Zabu, how as a child he had mastered the ancient dwarven art of alchemy, and by the age of 13, he had earned the title of Dragon Slayer. After that, his fame spread beyond borders, and he became an idol for everyone. Yanez asked why Zabu had become a target. One of the representatives explained that Zabu didn't always use his great power for the benefit of people. According to the report, he had killed 37 members of a historical family. The guild had simply closed the case because Zabu had also saved a city from a catastrophe of non-human scale. Therefore, no one knew what to do with Zabu. He was so strong that he had even destroyed an entire country and killed the entire royal family, as if facing a goblin's lair. Many noticed that he had no concept of what is good and what is not. Anaz said there was a huge reward for his head, and everyone had tried to kill him, but no one had succeeded yet. That was why the guild had given him the name, The Undead. Lin understood everything now. Zabu assessed Nor's strength and was frustrated that he had used so many daggers. Nor was so foolish that he offered to pay for the daggers. Zabu said that what troubled him the most wasn't that his legendary daggers had been broken, but that Nor had a sword that couldn't be broken. Zabu said he would be careful today and would use his secret dagger. The essence of it was that his single blade transformed into many blades, allowing him to destroy an entire country with a single strike. It was called the Silver Cross, and Zabu had created it himself. The Silver Cross attacked on its own and acted according to its will. They immediately attacked Nor, but Nor easily parried the attacks and protected Rola with his body. 
nor realized that he couldn't handle this as it was difficult to both defend and fight. Inaz noted that if this continued, Nor and Rola would definitely lose. Inaz came to her senses and asked Lin if she could help Nor and leave her alone. Suddenly, Inaz used her divine shield to assist Nor. With her divine shield, Inaz could easily defend against the silver blades. She couldn't hit Zabu, and she said that she could protect Nor, but only Nor would be able to handle Zabu. Nor saw a toad's fang and said that he could easily knock Zabu down, as he had knocked down birds that were much faster. Nor asked Inas to remove the shield when he told her to, and he increased the power of his strike. When he asked her to remove the shield, Inas complied, and Nor struck the silver daggers, which immediately broke. Nor said he had many of them, when suddenly Zabu decided to attack Inas from behind. Nor managed to parry the attack in time, and Zabu was already extremely angry, unable to understand how Nor had once again managed to parry his attack. Nor apologized for breaking his dagger, and Zabu asked how Nor managed to keep up with his attacks. Nor said it was just something that happened. Zabu said that he would retreat today as Nor had broken all his daggers, leaving him with nothing. Zabu mentioned that there would be a festival in the kingdom which he would visit. He bade farewell to Nor and remarked that Nor was truly strange. Zabu said that Rola was very lucky because he would leave today. Zabu tried to attack one more time, but Nor once again parried his strike and Zabu decided to leave for sure. They returned to the wagon, and Lin began to talk about the festival that would be in the capital. Nor suggested going back to the city, but Rola overheard and started to worry. Rola said that they couldn't return to the capital, because the strongest of all beings, the Death Dragon, is heading directly for the capital. Lin understood everything in order to return to the capital. Nor supported Lin, but Ina said she couldn't agree. However, Lin interrupted her, saying she knew everything because it was her brother and she couldn't run away now. She needed to return to the capital to help. Inaz said they would return, but under no circumstances should they stray from her. Nor asked what Rola wanted, and Rola said he would go with them as well. Although he might not be able to help much, he could try to save those who had also brought the dragon to the city. Nor thought how he would love to snack on that toad, remembering how much he liked poisons. As they headed towards the capital, Thek Lin thought that Nor was quite strong, as he had managed to defeat the Toad and also the legendary hero whom no one could defeat. As a princess, Lin wanted to help everyone in the capital and ordered Enos to travel as quickly as possible. The city had been devastated, but thanks to the power of the Great Six, they had managed to defend against the enemy. Lin's brother, Rain, said that they would definitely come and they needed to prepare for the next big wave. Rain wondered where the next attack would come from when he suddenly saw a massive barrier in the sky, behind which something unusual was moving. Rain activated the reveal and saw before him the enormous death dragon, unable to believe his eyes as he faced the dragon of destruction. 